Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Exploring Genetics. This is Xena. Uh, she is a big, beautiful, normal ball python. Um, you can see on her color here and her pattern, everything is normal. She's beautiful. She's, she's actually one of, in my opinion, one of our most beautiful snakes that we have, but she is a normal. Today, I want to talk about dinkers. Uh, many people get ball pythons, especially when you get them out of Africa, out of the wild, that even though they pretty much look like a normal, something about them seems a little bit different. Maybe they have a little bit, see how on her neck here, almost looks like there might be a couple splotches connecting up and forming a bit of a stripe. If you get a nice big, completely connected stripe halfway down the body, maybe you might think there's something going on there genetically. Uh, maybe you get a real high amount of blushing. Maybe the color is a little different, either a lot lighter or some kind of oranges shining through, or maybe the belly is really different. Hers is pretty standard. Um, she's got a clear belly, but, um, nothing, nothing amazing there, but uh, a dinker just means a ball python that uh, you don't have any proven genetics on, but that you're hoping to breed and see if there's anything else going on. So I want to talk about that today. How would you go about proving a dinker is a real gene? So there's a couple of things to consider. Um, you might get a ball python that looks totally different from a normal, completely different. This has happened before to people. Um, some major breeders have paid big money <laughs> for animals that come out of Africa and look way different. They breed them, the babies look totally normal, and they are like, well, maybe it's recessive. They breed those back, nothing. So there are different types of um, genetic uh, mutations, and we'll get into that later, but uh, that's the first step that you have to take. Just If you have a snake that you think is a dinker, that you think might be a new gene, and you breed it, and the babies all come out looking completely normal, it may be recessive. Now, recessives are a lot more rare in ball pythons. Uh, some of the other animals that have lots of morphs, like corn snakes and things like that, most of theirs are recessive. But ball pythons tend not to be. However, if you, if you have a really cool dinker project and you breed it, and all the babies come out normal, still hold on to those. Do some next generation breedings when those are old enough, uh, because you may have a recessive project and not, instead of a, you know, a codom or a dominant gene. So that's the first thing to consider. Um, another thing, what breeding are you going to do? If you have a male, are you going to breed that male to just normals to see if you get offspring that look like that male? Or are you going to put him to some morphs, some females that carry you know, just some basic pastel, uh, yellow belly, spider, whatever it may be, uh, but you're gonna have to think about that because if it is uh, a mutation and you put that male to all these different females and he does different things depending on what different genes you have put him to uh, you might be confused <laughs> when you see what comes out so um, it's always a good idea to keep a normal or two in your collection just especially if you're interested in, in breeding any dinker projects because uh, it's the easiest way to kind of see if the offspring look like the uh, adult dinker that you were breeding. Not to say you shouldn't breed it into, uh, you know, some other cool morphs as well, but it would, it's easiest if you can, when you're trying to prove out a new gene, to put it to at least a normal or two, uh, so that you can uh, kind of compare those offspring to the parent might be a little more difficult if your dinker is a female, but it can still be done. Um, not too many people are breeding normal males anymore, but it's still being done, especially when you're proving out dinkers. So uh, a mutation can occur in a couple different ways. Um, there can be somatic cells, that's pretty much all the cells in your body, they can get a mutation like if you get exposed to too much UV light or you know people try and cover up when there's x-rays, you don't 
you don't want to get that kind of mutation that can be you know cancer causing and stuff but uh, even if it's not even if it's totally harmless it's not going to be a mutation that can pass on to the offspring a mutation is going to be inheritable if it occurs in a cell that is a gamete so a sperm cell or an egg cell those can be passed on to the future generations and then you have a new gene basically a new mutation that's popped up so if you suspect your snake looks different from a true normal a wild type it might it really might be genetically different that doesn't mean that it's going to be inheritable that it can pass that gene on to the next generation and and so on it could uh, you can you know breed it out and give it a try that's how people come up with new mutations all the time but uh, there's no guarantee so even if you have a snake that is spectacularly different looking it's not guaranteed that it's going to pass on to the future generations so uh, there's a couple reasons I bring all this up right now one our friend Dakota that we went and visited that we are going to visit again soon has several dinker projects so he's gonna be in the future years trying to figure out if any of them are inheritable or not. And we'll do an entire episode on that next time we visit him. Um, which hopefully will just be in another week. Maybe two. Um, uh, if we work on um, any Tinker projects, which we are going to, uh, I'm not gonna give anything away yet, but uh, in the next week you'll see an episode um, Probably not one of the genetics episodes, but uh, one of just a regular a regular vlog talking about uh, a Dinka project that we want to get into, and we're pretty excited about it. Uh, but I don't want to give it away yet. But uh, yeah, so I just that was been on my mind, and I figured we'd do an episode addressing uh, Dinkers, what that means, how different genes can be inherited, what you might breed it to to um, prove if it is. A new gene or not and if it is that's exciting stuff people people have paid a lot of money for new genes or even just the possibility of new genes and they ship them in from Africa um, I mean it's it's a big risk that they take but it's part of what pushes the ball Python world forward it's it's a really cool concept that new genes are being added through mutation and I don't want to get too deep into this but it is a little bit cool to think about how these mutations are occurring. You know, we've all heard of DNA and DNA codes for proteins and proteins do everything in our bodies, including producing different skin pigments. And skin pigments determine what our colors are, what we look like. Um, and you've heard of probably melanin um, and uh, that's why you hear terms like amelanistic in different animals, animals that have no melanin or at least reduced melanin but there's a bunch of different pigments uh, tyrosinase is a, another big one um, there's tyrosinase positive or tyrosinase negative albinos we've talked about that a little bit I think anyway there's a bunch of pigments and it's proteins that create those pigments and it's DNA that codes for those proteins and every once in a while um, when the DNA gets messed up uh, the protein that it used to code for gets changed um, and usually if it's a major change it can often be fatal but if it's just something very slight uh, then you can get something like a new type of uh, patterning a new color scheme on the animal uh, I mean there's so many proteins most of them aren't controlling for uh, color but if one of them happens to be a, a pigment protein and it gets uh, some sort of mutation that's when you get all these changes and for whatever reason ball pythons seem prone <laughs> to those proteins getting mutated because there's hundreds of mutations um, in those proteins for for ball pythons and a few other species too retics um, leopard geckos corn snakes um, the you know the really the really morphed out species of reptile they just are prone to that and I like it I, I, I know that some people don't like 
morphs. They want every animal that they have to just be in its natural form, and that's fine, but I personally love morphs, and I love some of the animals that don't have morphs as well, but man, I just think that it's so exciting that you can take an animal that's just perfect, like a ball python, and get it in hundreds of different colors. Anyways, uh, we won't get any deeper into that today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or if you think I uh, misspoke on something with the, with the genetics involved here, please let us know in the comments and we'll fix it. But uh, yeah, till next time, this is Exploring Genetics and we are the Reptile Barn.